it's that time again. <laughs> time to learn more about menopause in general and breast cancer in particular. I'm Menopause Taylor, your dedicated gynecologist and teacher, even though I don't always act like it. <laughs> okay, so we began this breast cancer unit way back in video number 356, and here we are at video number 392, still discussing it. This is the 38th breast cancer video. We are in the part of the unit that addresses the different means of catching breast cancer early. We've already addressed the two means of catching it early by feeling or palpating for it. They include your self breast exam, which I discussed in video number 391, and your clinical breast exam, which I discussed in video number 392. So today we'll begin our discussion of the various means of catching breast cancer early by screening for it or seeing it radiologically. You'll find most of what I teach you here today in chapter 30 of my book, whether you have the first edition or the second edition, but as usual, I will embellish much more here. Okay, in video number 390, you learned that the various means of detecting breast cancer early fall into the 70%, 30% rule. 70% are detected by radiologic breast exam, which we're discussing today. 30% are detected by self or clinical breast exam. So this and the next few videos will present everything you need to know about the 70% of breast cancers that we find by radiologic means. When it comes to the radiologic means of detecting breast cancer, we use the term screening test to define the purpose of the procedure. I've taught you about screening tests before. A screening test is useful for any cancer that does not present any early symptoms. And you learned in video number 390 that breast cancer does not produce any symptoms until stage two or three. So it's very beneficial to have a screening test for breast cancer. You've also learned that there are specific criteria that a screening test must meet in order to be acceptable as a screening test. These criteria include all the following. It must serve the public at large rather than the individual patient. It must be inexpensive. It must be simple and accessible. It must be useful when the cancer is asymptomatic very early in the game or even precancerous. And it must focus on the possibility of cancer rather than the actual presence of cancer. Because the goal of screening for breast cancer is to indicate the possibility of breast cancer rather than the certainty of breast cancer, there will be instances of overdiagnosis or false positives. So we'll discuss both the utility of screening tests for breast cancer and the shortcomings of screening tests for breast cancer. We'll start today with the discussion of the most familiar screening test for breast cancer, which is the mammogram, and that's today's video. Next week, we'll discuss mammogram guidelines. And then the following week, we'll discuss controversies about mammograms. And the week after that, we'll discuss alternatives to mammograms. Know that I will get to everything. I just can't do it in a single video. So let's start with mammograms. I'll begin by making sure you know how to pronounce the word mammogram correctly. It's mam-o-gram. It's not mam-eo-gram. <laughs> Mammo means mammary gland. Your mammary glands are your breast. Gram refers to the use of radiographic film to assess your mammogram. So be sure to pronounce the word correctly. <laughs> the same kind of error occurs with the word preventive. 
many people incorrectly insert a ta between the prevent and the tiv. <laughs> it's preventive, not preventative. <laughs> In any case, mammograms are useful for screening for breast cancer because they can reveal abnormalities in your breast tissue. And they do this by using very, very low dosage x-rays, lower dosage than the x-rays of your bones. The procedure for getting a mammogram is one that women tend to dislike. It involves positioning your breast between two plates like this. And that requires flattening and compressing your breast tissue in order to get the proper angle, like this. The process is the same for film or digital mammograms. Film mammograms are stored on hard files like this, whereas digital mammograms are stored as el electronic files like this. <laughs> the process of getting a mammogram takes only about 10 or 15 minutes. Now, in the very first video of this breast cancer unit, I taught you that the anatomy of your breast consists of three structures. Glands, fat, and fiber. In video 356, we built what I like to call a breast salad. <laughs> Here you see a single lobe forming the basis of our breast salad. And we'll add our three components. The gland itself, I'm going to turn it this direction, the gland itself is the green broccoli. The fat is the yellow glob. And the fibrous tissue are the bamboo shoots. Oops. So we lost our fat for a moment there. Let's just stick it back on there, <laughs> see if it'll stick, okay? So the green lettuce leaf below here represents the lobe itself, which dictates the arrangement of these breast components in a circular or, uh, arrangement, but it has no other function in and of itself. Well, a mammogram reduces all of these structures to just black and white. The glands and the fat are black on a mammogram. The fiber is white on a mammogram. So if we convert our breast salad to what would, it would resemble on a mammogram, we get this. Here we have just the lobe itself, the black lobe underlying the three basic components. Then we have our black gland, which is like this, I'm trying to get it to stick. There we go. And then we have the black fat here. Nothing wants to stay. And then we have our white Fiber. Okay, it'll stay long enough just for me to pick it up and show it to you, okay? So here you have what this very same thing up top would look like on a mammogram down below. All right, so a mammogram is just black and white. Now, why do you think this black and white distinction matters? <laughs> You're probably thinking, duh, Barbie, all x-rays and such are black and white. <laughs> <laughs> and if that's what you're thinking, you are correct. But when it comes to mammograms, the black and white have an even greater significance than they typically do. Why? Because it's easy for a radiologist to see through the black stuff, but it's difficult for a radiologist to see through the white stuff. Here's a normal mammogram. You already know that the breasts of a menopausal woman 
are mostly fat, right? Remember this breast salad that I drew, made a long time ago? The glands and the fiber have shriveled and regressed due to loss of your estrogen and progesterone. Well, fat is black on a mammogram. And like I said earlier, it's easy for the radiologist to see through the black stuff. So a normal mammogram at postmenopause has a lot of black and very little white. For the radiologist reading the mammogram, that's like looking through a glass of water, clear as crystal. A crystal clear black mammogram is very easy to read. But in contrast to the black fat, fiber on a mammogram is white. And depending on how much dense fibrous tissue you have in your breast, the quantity of white on a mammogram varies. If you have very little dense fibrous tissue, the mammogram is mostly black. But if you have a lot of dense fibrous tissue, the mammogram is mostly white. When there's a lot of white on a mammogram, for the radiologist reading the mammogram, it's like trying to look through a glass of milk. And that makes reading the mammogram very difficult. Here's a comparison of the two. The breast on the left is fatty, so it's clear and mostly black, while the breast on the right is fibrous, so it's milky and mostly white. So you can accurately say that mammograms are merely a matter of black and white. But the quantity of black versus white is a big deal. It dictates the reliability of the mammogram itself. So this has led to a system for quantifying how much dense fibrous tissue there is in your breasts. The system is called the Breast Imaging and Reporting Data System. And it uses the acronym BIRADS, B-I-R-A-D-S. The BIRADS system divides the degree of breast density into four categories numbered one, through four. BIRADS 1 means your breasts are completely fat, fat, meaning the mammogram is completely black. BIRADS 2 means your breasts are mostly fat with scattered areas of increased density. So BIRADS 2 means the mammogram is still mostly black with very few areas of white. BIRADS 3 means your breasts contain about 50% fatty tissue, which is black, and 50% dense fibrous tissue, which is white. So half and half. And BIRADS 4 means that your breasts are mostly dense fibrous tissue, which is almost all white. Now, there are a couple of variations in this BIRADS ranking system. Some radiology centers use Arabic numerals. Other radiology centers use Roman numerals rather than the Arabic numerals. And still other radiologists, radiology centers use letters instead of numbers. So instead of using the numerals 1 through 4, they use the letters A through D. I have no idea why some people use numbers and others use letters. <laughs> but regardless of the chosen designation, the meaning is the same and the scale is simple. The official descriptions for these four BIRADS categories are BIRADS 1 equals fatty, BIRADS 2 equals scattered densities, BIRADS 3 equals heterogeneously dense, and BIRADS 4 means extremely dense. Or with Roman numerals, it's the same. And with letters, it's the same. So black means fatty and white means dense. Or black means non-dense and white means dense. Here's a photo depicting these different appearances of BIRADS categories on a mammogram. 
Here you just see the progression of increasing breast density from A to D. Here it is again using the Arabic numeral designations. And yet again. With all three photos, you can see just how the density progresses from one level to the next. In video number 359 on dense breasts, and in video 376 on dense breasts as a risk factor for breast cancer, you learn that your breast density is directly related to all sorts of things having to do with your age and your reproductive life. The older you are, the less dense your breasts are, which means less fiber and more fat. So the older you are, the saggier your breasts are. And that means the older you are, the blacker your mammogram will be. The younger you are, the denser your breasts are, which means more fiber and less fat. So the younger you are, the perkier your breasts are. And that means the younger you are, the whiter your mammogram will be. You also learned that the more pregnancies you've had and the more breastfeeding you've done, the fattier your breasts are. And this means that the more pregnancies you've had and the more breastfeeding you've done, the blacker your mammogram will be. And the fewer pregnancies you've had and the less breastfeeding you've done, the denser your breasts are, which means the wider your mammogram will be. You've also learned that the fattier your breasts are, the less fibrous or fibrocystic tissue you have in your breasts. And that means the fattier your breasts are, the blacker your mammogram will be. And then the denser your breasts are, the more fibrous or fibrocystic tissue you have in your breasts, which means the whiter your mammogram will be. Now, another factor that affects the appearance of your mammogram is your body weight. The fatter you are, the fatter your breasts are. That means the fatter you are, the blacker your mammogram will be. And the thinner you are, the denser your breasts are, which means the thinner you are, the whiter your mammogram will be. So in keeping with the principle that mammograms are just a matter of black and white, Fat is black and fiber is white, purely and simply. Now, notice that I have mentioned very little about the glands in your breasts. We've used broccoli florets to represent the glands. And I showed you this breast cycle many, many moons ago in order to demonstrate the changes of your breasts in response to breast hormones. And those changes affected mostly the glands. As you can see, this cycle includes the changes your breasts make from puberty here, or pre-pregnancy, all the way around through pregnancy and breastfeeding to post-menopause. Well, since we're discussing mammograms now, and you don't get mammograms while you're pregnant or breastfeeding, let's just remove the pregnant and breastfeeding breasts and see what, we've, what we're left with, okay? So let's just do this. I'm just taking all the parts off that don't need to be here to confuse you. Okay, so now we're left down to just the parts of your breast cycle that are involved when you're not pregnant. So these are just the glands during your reproductive cycles and postmenopause. Your breast glands during your reproductive cycles are due to stimulation by estrogen and progesterone. Here's the chart we created back in video number 358. Estrogen causes the duct to grow. Progesterone causes the lobules to grow. But look at this scrawny thing. This is the postmenopausal breast gland. 
notice that it's shriveled and shrunken compared to the other one. And the reason that it's shriveled and shrunken is because it is no longer stimulated by estrogen and progesterone. This is a common phenomenon that you will see again and again with any part of your body that was stimulated by either estrogen or progesterone. At postmenopause, when your body stops producing estrogen and progesterone, they shrivel and shrink. Of course, if you take HRT, it will stimulate your breast glands just like estrogen and progesterone always have. Instead of shrinking, the ducts and the lobules will stay normal in size. Recall also that the fiber in your breast is stimulated by estrogen. Take another look at our chart from video 358. The first and last items in the pink column elucidate the effect of estrogen on the fiber in your breasts. Loss of your estrogen is what makes your breasts squishier at postmenopause. So estrogen affects the density of your breasts. Well, if the estrogen your own body produces makes your breasts denser, then so does estrogen in the form of hormone replacement or birth control. So forfeiting HRT will result in fattier breasts, while taking HRT will result in denser breasts. That means if you do not take HRT, the blacker your mammogram will be. And if you do take HRT, the whiter your mammogram will be. So mammograms really are a matter of black and white. Every parameter makes your mammogram either more black or more white. If we make a chart to compare these things, we get this. This simple chart just depicts the factors that determine whether your mammogram is black or white in the first column. The particular that result in a black mammogram in the second column, and the particulars that result in a white mammogram in the third column. What you see is that there are many things that impact the density of your breasts and therefore contribute to whether your mammogram is black or white. So this brings us to the issue of dense breasts as a risk factor for breast cancer. If you look at any list of risk factors for breast cancer, you'll see dense breasts listed and cited as one of the top three risk factors for breast cancer. But if you stop and think about all the things that contribute to dense breasts in the first place, you realize that it may not be dense breasts per se in and of themselves that increase your risk for breast cancer. Instead, it's much more likely to be all the individual factors that increase your breast density and also increase your risk for breast cancer. And what's really problematic in the context of mammograms is the fact that dense breasts make it difficult to read a mammogram. Earlier I told you that reading a mammogram of fatty breasts is like looking through a glass of water. But the exact opposite is true for reading a mammogram of dense breasts. Reading a mammogram of a woman with dense breasts is like trying to look through a glass of milk. It's all white. Well, guess what else is white on a mammogram? Breast cancer. So dense breasts make it difficult to detect breast cancer. It's like trying to find a white cancer in white breasts. Here's a photo showing you the difference in detecting breast cancer in each of the four BIRADS categories of breast density. In the first photo of a fatty breast, the breast cancer is an obvious white dot on a black background. In the second photo of scattered breast density, the breast cancer is still obvious despite the scattered areas of white. In the third photo of a heterogeneously dense breast, the breast cancer is obvious even though there is a significant quantity of dense white breast tissue. But in the fourth photo of an extremely dense breast, the breast cancer is mostly concealed 
by the dense white breast tissue. Here's my creation <laughs> of a breast salad as it appears on a mammogram. The lobes, glands, and fat are all black, and the fiber is white. Now, I ask you, can you find the tumor? There is a breast cancer on this breast salad model. Can you see it? I don't need to be tricky. There it is, right there. It's a white pearl on a white fiber representing breast cancer. So the pearl is right there. I hope you can see it in this lighting. Maybe I'll back up a little bit. There it is, right there. And this elucidates the difficulty in finding white breast cancers in dense white fibrous mammograms. So while dense breasts may be a risk factor for breast cancer, it's just as likely that dense breasts merely obscure breast cancer on a mammogram. This issue of breast density interfering with the reading of a mammogram has become a very big and very public issue. In many geographic locations, it is mandatory to include a disclaimer on the mammogram report of all mammograms with BIRADS 3 or 4 degree of breast density. The laws require the radiology department performing a mammogram to include a warning to the patient that dense breasts limit the validity of the mammograms and advises them to discuss their dense breasts with their doctor. Some notifications even say that dense breasts increase the risk of breast cancer, and some recommend additional testing. Most patients find these notifications confusing, if not alarming. Of course, the notification creates problems of its own. Some doctors have no idea what to tell the patient about her dense breasts. And some patients overreact to the notification. No screening test is perfect. They all create false positives. But in the case of mammograms for breast cancer, dense breasts create a lot of false positives. And while mammograms may not be perfect, they are not harmful. I've heard women claim that mammograms cause breast cancer. Mammograms don't cause breast cancer any more than an x-ray of your arm causes a broken arm. The most common shortcoming of mammograms is that they create the need for further testing with a different screening test that can see more clearly through the milky white dense tissue. And we'll discuss these alternative screening tests three videos from now. But before we get to alternative radiologic screening tests, we need to discuss mammogram guidelines and controversies. So next week's video will be on mammogram guidelines and the one after that will be on mammogram controversies. So here's your summary for today. Mammograms are the most common screening tests for breast cancer. They reveal glandular and fatty tissue as black and fibrous tissue as white. The more fibrous and dense your breasts and the wider your mammogram, the more difficult it is to read the mammogram. As usual, if you want our little chart, you can find it via the link in the description box or at menopausetaylor.me. And while you're at menopausetaylor.me, you can schedule a life-saving consultation. I will see you on social media, including Facebook, Instagram, Stories, and Pinterest. And you'll get more tidbits if you subscribe to this channel and to my newsletter. So I will see you in a week. <laughs> Bye! <laughs>